had never seen Silent Film before. Yeah. And because it was a festival, I think they felt they could Absolutely. be introduced. I think that initial intention to, to make a connection with Kevin yeah. was so important. Mm. You know, I, mean, I think that's really ignited the whole thing. Back in the 50s, people were very snobbish about silent films. They told me they were badly photographed because the people didn't know how to do it properly. And the acting was ridiculous, terribly over the top. And um, I must say, it didn't coincide with what I was looking at as examples of films from as early as 1916. supposed to be accompanied by a tinny piano and I quickly discovered that the big films in the big theatres had symphony orchestras. In fact in New York the Strand Theatre had 101 musicians uh, with a Wurlitzer organ <laughs> as well. Um, but many of these people had been kids at the time and they did get the tinny piano you kind of start with things that aren't, you know, the most accessible, which may be musicians that you know or things that are easy. Mm. But it's incredible that from the very beginning, the silent films have always had yeah, yeah. the sort of best that you can possibly provide. What I normally do, which is an improvised score or a semi-improvised score, um, I think you, even if you forget about the music, which you should do, um, you're still kind of at some level aware that you're hearing someone interpreting the film in the moment. And I think maybe it's that kind of subconscious awareness of interpretation during the screening. So you, I think you know that that screening will be completely different from any other screening. How much people wanted to see Down With Your Way, to see, you know, footage of, of Wicklow in, in the 1920s to the 1950s. Well, it was a treat to put together a programme uh, for a venue of this age and of this splendour and um, because you can imagine that people who lived in the house here might well have shown films for entertainment purposes in the 20s and 30s so we very much are recreating the experience of coming together and watching films in I suppose a non-theatrical capacity these are films that wouldn't have been shown in cinemas but would have been shown in town halls or big houses or schools and so on so there, there is a nice uh, marriage of the location with the film programme like this it's just fantastic because it's like an ancient Ireland when the bards came around speaking poets and they went travelled from all the big houses and they used to perform and that's the history of a lot of Irish art people used to open their houses up to the storytellers and I think the idea of opening this up to silent films is just continuing that great tradition. I think with silent film you're much more involved and the live music is what makes it as well too. I think probably the directors were thinking quite differently than directors do nowadays. And they were bringing you into the sort of the centre of the film. I mean, everybody was part of the Captain Canary tonight. Well, the thing about the hand coming up was a tiny bit scary. I have a five-year-old son at home, and a couple of weeks ago, I played him a DVD of Charlie Chaplin's uh, The Circus 
and he was laughing his head off at it. And I thought, well, that's something. Um, a five-year-old boy laughing at a film that was made 80 years ago. We saw The Cat and the Canary and it was really brilliant and very spooky and exactly the films we shown in Kiradri. Simple, you know, there was amazing conversations around, you know, simple emotions. And morality. And morality and, yeah. and redemption. And there was a raw sexuality to that film, which would, you know, do a credit to today. She was the object of desire, but you could see why she was. There was no coyness about this. And I also think, I mean, I actually can't remember a film in any of the hundreds and hundreds of films I've seen where a woman said, you know, men are always trying to touch me, I want them to stop and showed the, you know, the fact that she would refuse love because of all this other unwelcome attention she'd got. That was, that was actually quite a daring subject. I think that'd even be a daring subject now. I felt thrilled, I had no idea that there would be live piano. It was like getting a concert and a film all in one. Uh, yeah, it was, it was a whole visceral experience. And really, because the piano was right there in the room, you could feel the vibrations in your body as well. It was, it was a very immediate way of witnessing a film. Um, it's a beautiful place to have a film festival because it's, it's really lovely to sit in the library and be in such an enclosed room and in, so dark, not like a normal cinema. And it was, really, it was a really lovely experience. We saw Grass, which is about Persian nomads in 1925 and their incredibly arduous trek. And it was accompanied by a really brilliant piano score. And the guy somehow playing the piano and also playing the flute at the same time. So it was great. Suddenly, a whole lot of people watch it together and come and travel mm. to watch that film. Yeah. And it becomes so much more of an event. In terms of Kuradri Arts, that's almost, that's our starting point for every project. Mm. You, you know, we always remind Kuradri is a home. Saying about nostalgia, that it's yeah. not about nostalgia, that it's actually, yeah. Sound film is a, a whole genre and art form mm. in itself. Those little things like you showing the clip from, you know, the 60s French movie Before Sunrise, mm. each little component, each little sort of thing that we mm. curated throughout the weekend, mm. through people off, off course, yeah. the people who are expecting a comfortable ride, off course a bit, mm. but at the end when they left, they had, they I think they were much more, yeah. they had got way more from the evening. Somebody almost died by the monster. Thank you.